Phoebe said, I'm, I'm TJ. I'm the associate pastor here at Cross Church. I'm really excited to be uh, with you this morning, to be preaching this morning the Word of God. Uh, I love God's Word, love uh, exp- uh, thinking of it, uh, studying it, talking about it, uh, trying to impart it to others, and so I'm really excited about this. Um, we are in a series right now called The Blueprint, and The Blueprint is all about what it means to follow Jesus and what, like, what are the core things that we ought to be doing as followers of Jesus to uh, really do that well. If you think about uh, like building a house, uh, you're, you're building a house, and, and the thing that everybody's excited about are all the, the external things, how it looks, how we're going to furnish it, the, what, how big my TV is going to be in there. But the most important things are the foundational things, is the foundation, the piping, the plumbing, the, the electrical stuff, all that stuff that you don't really see. And that's what we want to focus on as Christians. What's the most important things that we can be doing as we seek to follow Jesus? And so the very first week, uh, PV introduced it and talked about building a foundation and talked about how our foundation as Christians should be on love. The Bible says that God is love and that we live out his commands by loving him and by loving other people. And so our foundation is love. And then last week we talked about how we, we do that in community how we, God, has not created us to be alone. The Bible says it's not good to be alone, but actually to be with other people. And so we want to, to build a community. We have the body of Christ, and we have a group, and we have an inner circle, and we have that core relationship with Jesus. And so in all of those things, how important it is, it is for us to have community. And so we're going to continue this morning talking about uh, the blueprint. As we do that, I want to just open with a word of prayer. So uh, would you pray with me? Father God, we love you. Uh, you are so good to us, and we just thank you so much for your grace. We thank you that your presence is here with us this morning. I pray that you would fill this room, that you would fill our hearts, that you would fill each of us so that we can uh, love one another and love you better. God, I pray that your word would speak to us, that you would meet us here, and that you would have a word for each of our lives and what we are going through. God, I pray um, that, that you would go with us throughout this week as we seek to love you and follow you more deeply. It's in Jesus' name we pray, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Uh, so <clears throat> as I was going through school, uh, getting my, my, I got my undergrad in Bible, and then I went to seminary, and in both of those contexts, I had to take church history classes. And for a while, I was like not that interested in church history. There's a lot uh, of, of weird stuff that happens. That you got like warring popes at one point, and you've got uh, all these different things going on in church history. But the one part of church history that always interested me was the monks. That there are monks all throughout church history. At every time throughout church history, you've got people who said, I want to follow God. And the way for me to follow God is to get away from all this stuff, to go way out into the desert, and to just like chill and read and write. And there is a large part of that that sounds very appealing to me. <laughs> I, would, I would be great. You know, I, when I was in college, uh, I had to take a personality test, and I scored 100% introverted. Uh, so I, I, I'm with that, right? Like, if I can go and not have to talk to anyone for a long time, I'm really good. Um, but the thing that always sounded hard about that is not like my silence, but the silence around me. Because what I've noticed about myself is that while I don't have to be talking or, or engaging, I really like having input. So I, I have a hard time just like sitting silently. I need to be uh, listening to something, listening to music, listening to an audio book, watching a movie, reading a book, doing something. I always need some kind of input in my life. And, and I, I think that's why it makes, me, it makes it really hard for me to just spend time in the presence of God, to just sit and wait and listen to God. I don't know if, uh, if PV does this on purpose or if this is just the Holy Spirit, but I, I feel like I always have to preach about things that I'm bad at. Um, <laughs> so we're going to do that this morning. We are going to talk about what it means to spend time in the presence of God, to just sit and wait in the presence of God. We're talking about the blueprint, about these foundational aspects of what it means to live out the Christian life in the world. And if you think about a construction project, most of the time you're doing the work, right? Like you got to be out there doing the work or nothing gets done. But the problem is, is that if we only focus on that, it's easy for us to get off track. That we need to take time sometimes and step back from the work and consult the blueprint 
and look at what the blueprint is telling us to do. Maybe we need to even spend time and talk to the designer, talk to the architect, and say, like, what, what are the things we need to do? Is, what we're, is the work that we're doing matching up with the vision that you have given us to do? And this is what we need to do as Christians, because as Christians, I think we spend a lot of our time living the mission, like going out and doing Christian things, being out in the world, doing the stuff of Jesus, going to church, doing Bible studies, uh, trying to evangelize, whatever it is, we're, we're out there, we're doing the stuff of Jesus, but it's really important for us sometimes to step back and to just spend time in the presence of God, to spend time with the architect of the universe and let him direct us and show us how our life is or is not in line with the blueprint, that we want to seek the presence of God. That's our, our main idea for you this morning, to, to go out and seek the presence of God. And what I want to do is I want to look at some passages of Scripture um, through the life of Jesus. And I want to look at these, these verses in the life of Jesus and see what it shows us about how Jesus saw the presence of God, presence of God. And these are not like, there's not like one story. These are just single verses, sometimes just a phrase within a verse, something I think we often would, would maybe skip over. But as we look at the totality of it, I think it's going to show us something important about the life of Jesus. And what I think it's going to show us is that as Jesus was in the midst of life, as he was going out and doing ministry and, and healing and teaching and in all of these things, he lived in a pattern of seeking the presence of God. So let's look at scripture this morning. Uh, these should all be on the screen. You don't have to flip to them because there would be a lot of flipping going on. So we're going to start in Matthew 14, 13. It says, as soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. Matthew 14, 23, after sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Matthew 17, 1, six days later, Jesus took Peter and the two brothers, James and John, and led them up a high mountain to be alone. You see where we're going here? <laughs> Mark 1, 35, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got out and went out to an isolated place to pray. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. That's Mark 6, 32. Luke 4, 42. Early the next morning, Jesus went out to an isolated place. The crowd searched everywhere for him. When they finally found him, they begged him not to leave. Luke 5, 16. But Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. Luke 9, 18. Jesus left the crowds to pray alone. Do you see the pattern in Jesus' life? Jesus had a consistent pattern in his life and ministry to get away to seek the presence of God, to be close to the presence of God. And the question I kept asking myself as I was preparing this message this week is that if this is the pattern of Jesus' life, if Jesus, who is literally the God of the universe, needed time to get away, to spend time with God, then why do I think I don't have to? Then why do I think, it's fine, I got it, I'll just keep going, I can just keep going, I can go on, I can handle it. Because the truth is, I cannot handle it. And we come up with all these excuses, you know, I'm busy, I'm tired, I'll be okay, I can do it later. The baby woke up early, that, that's me, right? And I, I don't have time to do this. But Jesus, and so we come up with all these reasons to say, like, I, I can't afford to spend time with God right now. And I think when we look at the life, life of Jesus, it shows us we can't afford not to spend time with God at any time. That like we want to seek the presence of God all the time. That's what we see Jesus doing, and he is our example. And so I want to look at kind of three Three big ways that, that we can do that uh, from the life of Jesus. That we can retreat to the presence of God, that we can enjoy the presence of God, and that we can stay in the presence of God. So let's look at that first one. We want to retreat to the presence of God. In nearly all of these verses, we see that Jesus isn't just spending time with God, but he's actually retreating specifically to somewhere else to seek the presence of God. That Jesus is not seeking God like on the go, like pulling through the drive through of God's presence and like, hey, can I get some grace for today while I go? No, he is retreating somewhere, taking the time to seek the presence of God. And I think that this is the hardest part, that the hardest part of this is to find time to retreat from the world around us. And I think it's hard, most of all, because it requires that we say no. 
and we don't like saying no. We are afraid all the time that we're going to miss out on something. Like, you know, I, I can't turn my phone off because what if somebody needs me? What if, what if there's a thing at work? What if, what if somebody calls me? And we, I can't take a day off because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like on that grind. I got to be hustling and, and my hustling isn't enough. So I got to have a side hustle and then I got to have a, a side, side hustle. And we just keep going and going and going, right? And for everything that we do, we feel this need to have some kind of like tangible reward on the other end of it. And so it's hard for us to spend time with God because often time with God, the reward is the time with God. It's not something we get out of it, but it's just being with him is the reward. And so I think what most of us do most of the time is we try to multitask, right? We do this all the time. We gotta, I got to listen to a book while I'm driving. I got to talk on the phone while I do my laundry. You know, I... I I don't know if you guys ever do this. This is like confession time. Sometimes I'm like, I'm like watching a movie or something on my TV. And then while I'm doing that, I'm like trying to do like some work, like I'm like doing my taxes or whatever. And then while I'm doing that, like somebody texts me and I've got three screens going at one time because I, I'm trying to multitask. And there are so many distractions. And, and I think often we bring that into our spiritual life and we try to do the same thing with God. And we say like, God, I'll, I'll, I'll spend time with God while I'm doing a bunch of other stuff today. I'll spend time with God in the midst of life, and we kind of half pay attention to him while we're doing everything else. But that's not the pattern of Jesus. The pattern of Jesus is to retreat, to go away, to go somewhere else. The passage Luke 5, 16, I wanted to focus on that one. In verse 16, it says that Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness to pray. That he often, this is a thing that happened often, withdrew. That he didn't stay where he was, but he went somewhere else. And here's what I want us to see. What verse 15, if we go back one verse, it says this. Despite Jesus' instructions, the report of his power spread even faster, and vast crowds came to hear him preach and be healed of their diseases. And then it says, but often Jesus withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. Now, here's what I want to see about that, that in order for Jesus to retreat, he had to say no, that the crowds had showed up and they said, hey, Jesus, we're here. We are ready for you to do your work. I want you to heal me. Can you teach me? Can you do something for me? The whole crowd is there. And Jesus says, no, I actually need to go spend time with God. Mm-hmm. Just imagine, like, don't blow, imagine you are one of those people. You have, uh, you're blind, you have a lame leg, you, you need some kind of teaching, and you show up to see Jesus, and Jesus leaves. I would be so mad, right? Like, I imagine they were so mad. And yet Jesus says, like, I can't do that right now. I need to go spend time with God. A commentary that I read on this um, by Fred Craddock, he, he talks about this, and he says, It was no simple or easy matter to turn away, even for prayer, as long as even one diseased or dispossessed person asked Jesus for help. And some of us regard turning from evil to good a victory, but only persons of extraordinary spiritual discernment can turn from what is good to the power necessary to resource that good. That this is what's hard. It, it, it's hard in one sense to turn from something that is bad to something that is good, but it's really hard to turn from something that is good to something that is necessary. And I think that that's what Jesus shows us, is that we need to sometimes say no to things, even things that are good, so that we can go to what is necessary. And what is necessary is the presence of God. And we want to be close to him. And so we need to spend time in the presence of God. And as we do that, we gain more power, more insight, more wisdom, so that we can go back out and do more good, right? Like, it's not like, well, no, sorry, I can't ever help you, but it's, it's I need to do this now so that I can do good later. And this is the rhythm that God has built into our spiritual life and also into the world. Think about plants, right? Plants have growing seasons and they have dormant seasons. The sun is out for a little bit and then it retreats and it goes away, that our bodies, we do a bunch of stuff, and then we have to go to sleep. It's this rhythm of life. And it's even like built into other areas of our lives, right? If you think about sports, right? You go play, and then you take a time out, and you have a rest. Or, or you play, and then you come back, and you huddle. Or, or your job, uh, you work, and then you have a break, hopefully. Hopefully your employers give you that, right? <laughs> but that's the idea, is that you do it, and then you take a break. And this is the rhythm of life. But for some reason, with God, we don't have these kinds of rhythms. And we think, I'm just going to go, 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 and I'm going to assume that God is with me. But what we need to do is we need to retreat to the presence of God. 
And so I wanted to point out just two specific things about what Jesus is doing here as he retreats to the presence of God. The, the first is that Jesus makes a physical change of space, right? Every time in here it says that Jesus like was where he was and then he went somewhere else. He went to the wilderness. He went up to the mountain. It wasn't like Jesus was just like in the middle of the crowd and he was like, all right, I'm just going to take a minute to pray and be with God, you know? <laughs> Like not, not that you can't do that, but I think that it's important to see that Jesus is actively making a change of space, that retreating means we need to get out of where we are because where we do our life is where the most distractions are. And it's hard for us to hear from God in that place. This is, I think, what the monks got right. They're like, we got to go out to the desert where it's quiet to hear from God, that we can't hear him in the noise of life. And so we want to hear God we need to get away. We need to go somewhere free of distraction. And so I don't know what that looks like in your life, but maybe you need to find a way to get free from distraction. Maybe you need to go on a walk and you need to get out of the house and where it's quiet at night or in the morning and spend some time with God there. Maybe you need to get out of town and you need to say, like, I need to go on a retreat and go and spend some time away. Maybe, maybe you just have a certain place in your house that is designated for that. I think about when I was growing up, uh, we, um, when I was in uh, eighth grade, we moved to a new house, and, and we had a front porch and this porch swing, and that was my mom's place, that I would see my mom out there, and every time my mom was out on the porch swing, she was spending time with God. She had a place that she could be, that she could spend in the presence of God. And I know that this can be hard, right? Like, if you have a lot of kids like me, sometimes it's just the bathroom, I just got to, like, I need somewhere away from people. I, I need somewhere away from my kids. But we need to make a change of space so that we can be free from distraction. And related to that, I think the second thing is that Jesus retreated from people, right? Like, he's with the crowd, and he says, I need to go away to be alone. The word alone is in a bunch of those passages. And I think that there's different stages of this, like, kind of like PB talked about. Like, because sometimes he's with the disciples. It says he went off to be alone, and the disciples were with him. So he's still, he's still kind of like alone with the disciples. It's just saying he's getting away from the crowd to spend time with his group. And sometimes he's getting away from his group to spend time with his inner circle. And sometimes he's even getting away from his inner circle to spend time just with God. Amen. And we need to be aware of that in our lives and what it looks like for us to say, like, I need some time away by myself, and that's okay. In fact, that's good. And that doesn't mean that I don't, like, want to be with you or spend time with you, but I just need some time away uh, retreating to be alone in the presence of God. And so if we want to seek the presence of God, the first thing we need to do is retreat to his presence. The second thing I think we want to do is we want to learn to enjoy the presence of God. In the Bible, uh, Jesus talks often about his relationship with the Father, right? So in, in none of these passages does it say, like, Jesus was really enjoying his presence. That, that word is not in there. But I think we see this in the way that Jesus talks about his relationship with God. In John 14 and 15, he says, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. He says, I love the Father, and the Father loves me. You never get the impression that Jesus is spending time with God out of duty. He's spending time with God because of love. That he loves God, and God loves him, and he loves being in God's presence. And this is why this is important, because you make time for what you love. Nobody has to twist my arm to eat three meals a day. I just like food. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, nobody had to force me to go see the Batman. That movie was three hours long, and I found time to see it because I really wanted to. You know what I'm saying? That we make time for what we love. And this is what we do all the time. That, that whatever you love to do, maybe you love fishing or hang out with your friends or cooking, and you make time to do that. And so we want to think about that as it relates to Jesus. There's this great book called You Are What You Love by James Smith. And, and basically the point of it is exactly that, that we are pulled most often toward the things that we love. And as we think about spiritual growth and discipleship in the church, that we've spent a lot of time uh, talking about how we think and what we believe, but we haven't spent enough time talking about our heart, because our heart is really what is going to drive our decision making. Like, think about, uh, it's not necessarily about what we say or what we think, but what we love ultimately is going to pull us in a certain direction. I'm sure that I am not the only one who has made a major life decision because of a girl that I liked. <laughs> right? Like people do that. And it's not the wisest decision, right? It's not, if you're looking at it objectively, it's not the, maybe the right decision, but it's the one that you do because your heart is pulling you that way. 
And so we want to cultivate a love of God and a love of God's presence because that's what's going to drive us there. That's what's going to push us closer to the presence of God. If we're going to consistently seek the presence of God, then we have to love being in the presence of God. We have to enjoy being in the presence of God. Now, maybe you are asking yourself, because I think there's an important question we need to ask, which is, what if I don't? Like, what if I don't enjoy the presence of God? Because sometimes we don't. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes there's so many distractions that we just feel like we can't focus. Sometimes we've got things inside of ourselves that are undealt with, and it makes being in the presence of God uncomfortable. Sometimes we just, uh, we just don't really know, and we can't figure out why. We just don't enjoy it. We don't, it doesn't seem to be fun or helpful or whatever, and it's hard. And I think part of the problem is that sometimes we understand what it means to love something or enjoy something wrong, where we think if I, if I love it, then that means it's easy. You know, if I, if I love my career, then my career's not work or whatever. Maybe you've heard someone say that, like, I, I've never worked a day in my life because I loved my career. And that's great, and I hope that that's true for you. <laughs> but let me tell you, I love my career. I, I believe it is a vocation and a calling, and I am so thankful to God for it on my life. But sometimes it's hard. And just because something is hard doesn't mean that we don't love it or that we don't enjoy it. In fact, most things that are good, that are, that are the truest loves, are hard and do require hard work and discipline. And so even when we love God, sometimes we have days that we don't feel like spending time in his presence. We'll have days that we, we don't feel like doing it because it seems difficult. And so when I say that we should enjoy the presence of God, I don't mean it's always going to be easy or fun, but simply that we know that it is going to be life-giving, that it is going to provide something that we truly, deeply desire beyond anything else, that we have this desire to spend time in the presence of God because we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God wants what's best for us. And so in order to cultivate the, that desire, in, to, in order to grow in our love for God, and for his presence, we have to put ourselves in places that remind us of our first love. So we have to put our places, ourselves in places that remind us of why we love God. So when we come to church and we worship and we sing together, we are reminding ourselves of the goodness of God and why we love God in the first place because of all that he has done for us and all of the reasons that he is worthy of worship. And when we go to a small group, we do that because we are reminding ourselves in community with other people, we're allowing other people to speak life into us to remind us of why God is good. That when you hear somebody else say, look, this is what God did in my life, you remember, man, God did that for me too. That's true. Because when we're just like by ourselves, it's easy to forget those things. But we put ourselves in places to remind ourselves of why he is good. I was thinking even this as it relates to fasting. As we're doing our, our fasting, our 100 days of prayer and fasting, it is a reminder that whatever I have given up, I don't love that as much as I love God. Amen. And that I know that I have a tendency to try to love that, and so I'm going to just not do it. I'm going to say I'm going to take that away so that I can focus on the one thing that I really, truly do love, and that's God. And so as we do that, as we do these practices and these habits to try to remind ourselves of why we love God, we grow in our love for God. And we get into his presence. And I believe that the more we get into his presence, the more our love for his presence grows. Think about how many things in your life you truly do love, but it's hard to get started. Or like it's, hard to take the first, it's hard to go to the gym the first time. But maybe at, at the 20th time you really enjoy it. You know, maybe. I don't know. But there are many things that it's hard to take the first step, but as you do it, you enjoy it. And I think that's true of going into the presence of God. So we want to enjoy the presence of God. And lastly, we want to stay in the presence of God. When we retreat to the presence of God and we find that we enjoy the presence of God, I believe that leads us to be able to stay in his presence all the time. Because when we look at the life of Jesus, it's not as if Jesus retreated to the presence of God and then he was like, all right, bye God. And then he like went out back into the world and left his presence. No, God's presence was with him all the time. And when he retreated to the presence of God, it was filling him up to take the presence of God with him everywhere that he went. He was constantly in communication with God. The Spirit of God was with him all the time. I really love this exchange in John chapter 12 where Jesus is, um, Jesus is like in the middle of a sermon. 
And just like in the middle of his sermon, he starts praying and he's like, Father, bring, bring glory to your name. And then God speaks from heaven and is like, I've already done it. And then some people are like, was that thunder? What was that? You know, it's this, it's this, but it's this really interesting exchange where Jesus is in the midst of life and still in communication with God. And I think that as we retreat to the presence of God and enjoy the presence of God, now we can go and we can stay connected to his presence all the time. If you think about the more we return to a particular thing, that thing, the more that thing becomes a part of us. And the more we see it, the more we connect to it, the more we go throughout life having that thing. We, at our men's ministry this, uh, this week, we had this great conversation about the kingdom of God. And, and as you think about the kingdom of God, we were talking about what it means to be like an ambassador in a country. The Bible calls us ambassadors. And so we are ambassadors of the kingdom of God in the country of the world. And it just kind of got me thinking about like what, what this looks like. If you go and visit a different country that has a different language and a different culture, that becomes a part of you. You start to learn the language. You start to absorb the culture. And then when you come back, you have some of that with you right? Like, uh, my, my wife is, is fluent in Spanish. She's awesome. And she learned that when she went to Spain. She went and spent some time in Spain, and she became fluent and learned the language and learned the culture. And then she came back, and she still has that. She is still able to speak in that language. It didn't just like, only when I'm within the borders of Spain can I speak in Spanish. But it's actually like she brings it with her. And the more you immerse yourself in something, the more it becomes a part of you. And so as we immerse ourselves in the presence of God, when we retreat to the presence of God, we learn the language. We learn the language of spirituality and the kingdom of God, and then we're able to take that language wherever we go, and we're able to speak it, even when we are in the midst of the world, in the midst of a different culture, in a different language, we still have God with us. The Bible says that we are in the world, but not of the world. And so even though we need to continue to retreat, you know, if, if, if Carly uh, stops using Spanish, then eventually she'll lose it. And so she needs to kind of retreat and continue to do that. But as we continue to retreat to the presence of God, the more it becomes a part of us and the more we can take it with us. Because I don't believe that for Jesus there was this hard line of like where the presence of God was and where the presence of God wasn't. As if he like, uh, he needed to go and like get oxygen and like hold his breath and then go back out and then go back and get more oxygen. I think it was more that he was filling himself up to take it with him. Yes. That the times in the wilderness and on the mountain were opportunities to immerse himself in the presence of God so that he could still see it when he went out into the world. You know, I think one of the things that I have been learning uh, maybe about myself that God has been teaching me is that, um, is that God is always working and God is always there and that if I don't see him, it's not because he's not there, it's because I'm not paying attention. Yes. And I think, that, I think that most of the time, I'm not paying attention because there are so many distractions. And so we go, and so when, I think when Jesus went to the presence of God, he's learning what God looks like. He's learning what God sounds like, so that when he goes back into the world where all the noise is, he can still recognize God. He can still see him. He can still hear him. And I think that's why it's so important for us to spend time in the presence of God because we learn to pay attention to him there in the quiet, in the stillness. We can see him even in the midst of the noise of life. And so we retreat to the presence of God and we enjoy the presence of God so that we can stay connected to the presence of God all the time. So as we close this morning, uh, I'm going to ask the band to, to come up. And I just want to encourage you all to seek the presence of God, Amen. to find time, to make time for what you love, what you truly love, which is God, and to spend time with him. God is the architect of your life. Hebrews says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. He has made the blueprint, and we want to follow him. And if we want to truly follow him, we can't do that on the go. We need specific set aside time to spend in the presence of God. And when we have that time in the presence of God, then we can truly learn to enjoy him and learn to love him more and more and more each day. And then we can take that love and take that presence and go with us as we live our lives. And so what I want to to do this morning is to just spend a little bit of time resting in the presence of God. The, the band is going to play, and we're going we're gonna to wait a minute before we sing. I think sometimes we, we want to respond, and we want to respond by doing something. I want to sing, or I want to come down from prayer, and, and those are, are great, but I want to take just a minute, and I want us to just rest, to not do anything, 
and just rest in the presence of God. And so as the band plays, if you want to, you can do this however you want. If you need to make a change of space, if you need to go to the cross, if you need to come to the altar, if you need to go to the foyer, whatever you need to do, spend some time in the presence of God, in the presence of the holy, beautiful, wonderful, amazing God that we serve. Let him fill you up with the fullness of himself, with the fullness of his love. And in a few minutes, the band will sing, and then if you want to come forward for prayer, we would love for you to do that, to make a decision um, for Jesus. And so let's spend time in his presence together now.